coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next Allegro 5 platformer made easy tutorial and we're gonna continue where we left off. So we were in the layer.cpp file and we had just finished loading the content. So what do we do when we finish loading the content? We loop through it. So we'll loop through the size of it and J's as an attribute I dot size and so we'll say that if attributes I dot J is equal to and if we take a look at our map there's three things that we want to get solid tiles tile sheet and and start layer so first we'll get a uh, we'll get solid tiles so if it's equal to solid tiles then we're gonna want to add that to a vector so let's create a vector in layer h and uh, it's going to consist of a std pair and uh, it's gonna be int by int and we'll call it solid tiles pretty simple so now we're going to make a private function and we're going to call it like set tiles or or something like that and we're going to take in a string so we'll call it tile string okay and we're going to go to our cpp file and we're just going to make a call to it well actually we should return a std pair Okay, so we're going to return an STD pair and we'll just copy this right here, save us some time. And what we're going to do is we'll just create an STD pair in here. Uh, we'll just call it tile or something. And we'll say tile.first is going to be equal to tile string dot substring. And we're going to do it from zero till tile string dot find till uh, the comma and yeah and then we're going to say dot c string underscore string and what we're going to do is wrap that around atoi so that it will convert it to an integer type and we'll do that for second as well so we'll say atoi tau string dot substring but we're going to go from tau string dot find and we'll find this plus one dot c underscore string and that is it and what we'll, what we'll do is return tile so what is this saying right here so we're going to be going to our map file and we're going to be uh once we get a tile it's going to be split apart by a comma so what we're going to do is this is extracting the first value and then tile.second is extracting the second value and we return the tile. So that's all that's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to say solid tiles dot pushback and we're going to push back set tile set tiles and we'll pass in contents ij. So that should set it uh, correctly for us. So we'll say an else if attributes ij is equal to uh, tile sheet. So what we're going to have to do in our layer.h is we're going to have to make an Allegro bitmap for our tile sheet. And we're going to say is tile sheet is equal to al load bitmap and we'll load contents ij.c underscore string so last but not least else if attributes ij is equal to start layer so if equals to start layer there's a bunch of things that we've got to do so what we're going to uh what we're going to say is we'll, we'll make a for loop and k k is less than contents i dot size k plus plus so this is going to loop through each line of our map file so uh we want to loop through it and then we want to actually display that in into a tile instance 
if we look, so if we look at our map file, I put three dashes as their like null tiles. We shouldn't even do whatever. And I, I made it, I made something right here, which will specify what a null tile is. And you can load that in if you like, right? That is, that is optional. But I'm just going to assume that all our maps, our null tiles are going to be like this, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if contents ik is equal to is not equal to sorry then we'll do the stuff in here we don't need to create a tile if it's we only need to create a tile instance if it is actually a tile if it's not a tile there's no point in creating a tile instance in the first place so what we have to do is uh if it's not that then we are going to create allegro bitmap to a tile image and we'll also be making a tile state we'll call it temp state and it will be equal to tile state and we'll name it as passive okay so first of all we need to check if that tile is a solid tile or if it's a passive tile so if it is a solid tile then we need to change temp state equal to solid so how are we going to do this so we're going to say that if std find and we're going to go from uh from solid tiles dot begin solid tiles dot end and we're going to look for set tiles and we'll say contents i k so if it if that is not equal to and I think this is getting off screen right now uh, so if this is not equal to solid tiles dot end that means that it is actually contained within solid tiles and what did I forget to do yeah so it, that means if it's not equal to the end of it that means it is contained within solid tiles and i forgot to let you guys know if this that doesn't work for you just include the algorithm class in layer.h okay so uh if it contains it then we're just gonna say temp state is equal to tile state solid okay easy enough and and what I'm gonna do is instead of doing this because we're gonna have to do a lot with our tiles now I'm just gonna cut that I'm going to make an std pair and I'll just call it tile and it's gonna be equal to that and so we'll just pass in the tile right here so and I'll just put in the even though we don't need these I'll put them in just to make it clearer or easier for you to read so what that's going to do is yeah it's going to set it to a solid state so now what we have to do is we have to get our tile image and we're going to say al create sub bitmap and our parent is going to be the tile sheets now our x position is going to be tile dot first times 32 tile dot second times dot 30 times 32 and we're gonna just assume our tile dimension of 32 by 32. And again, I have it in my file that the tile dimensions is 32 by 32. It's up to you if you wanna load that in or not, or if you're just gonna have one type of tile dimension. So we have our tile image, we have our, our tile state. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just make a tile instance. And then we're going to, what we have to do is in here we have to, in our layer dot h we have to make a vector of our tiles so we'll just call them tiles yeah so everything's fine with that so we'll say tiles dot push back and the reason why we're doing it this way is because we don't want to make a pointer to the class when we really don't need to make a pointer i i'm not sure if i did that in this series already uh, but if we don't really need to make a pointer to the instance, then there's no point in doing it. Uh, so we'll say tiles dot instance. We'll say tiles dot push back, and we'll add in the instance in there. And uh, once we do that, we'll make a call to tiles dot 
uh what is it tiles dot tiles sorry tiles dot size i tried to like a mental lapse for a second sorry set content so we're gonna have to set our tile image the temp state and the position now the position we never set anything for that yet and we're going to set that quickly but before we do that at the top of the load content we're just going to make a variable called index y and we'll just set it to zero and outside the for loop we'll say index y plus plus and i'm going to explain that in just a second but what we're going to do is we're going to say std pair float float position and it's equal to uh we'll just say position dot first or yeah we'll just say it's equal to uh sorry so it's k times 32 and we're gonna say it's index y times 32 now why did we have to make an index y variable well, this was uh, the K is going to represent the X coordinate based on uh, the map elements. But the reason why we have to use index Y is because when we start loading the map, we want to start from point zero. For example, when we look at our map at this coordinate, this is tile zero zero. But if we were to use say uh, I or J, it's not guaranteed to be zero. J is not guaranteed to be zero. I is not guaranteed to be zero. And it's not guaranteed to be the right position or you need it to be. So you made a new variable called index y, which is which will specify our y uh our y position on the map, and then we'll increase the y position every single line that we do. So we will get the correct position. We'll place it in here and like so and that should be fine. So I'm going to end the tutorial here and then we'll finish off the last tutorial by drawing our map to the screen. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and bye for now.